Hi, everybody. Welcome to something unique. Uh, we don't know what to call it yet. We could call it Talking Real Sound Investing or Sound Investing Real Money, but it's a uh, it's a podcast. It's a video, maybe. It's an all kinds of thing. It's an all-purpose program that the three amigos, the triumvirate here, uh, have uh, are going to get together every couple of weeks to do a joint and, and in Washington, that takes on a totally different meaning than it does in much of the rest of the country. A joint podcast between sound investing and talking real money. I'm Don McDonald. Over here we have, and I, th I think I'll go by age, Paul Merriman, the host of Sound Investing and from paulmerriman.com. You, you can speak words if you want to. It's Well, radio. it's great to be here, Don. I'm still confused what we're doing, yeah. but I'm here and you guys have always told me what to do. So I'm just waiting patiently. Tom's been telling you to do to what to do longer than I have. Uh, and that's, that's true. Who's next. Tom, that's true. who's bossed Paul Merriman around for like 25 years or something. You're going to make me feel really bad now. Beating up the I old tried. guy, but okay. Why not? I tried really hard. So hi, gentlemen. Welcome to our new little get together. Hey, it's great to be here. I really am excited and uh, had a difficult time sleeping last night. Part of that was because so one of the three dogs were sick. But uh, other than that, I was also, you know, excited about getting together with you guys. Now, yeah, by the we, way, we got we, the dog fixed. So uh, it's only you I have to worry about now. I don't want to be fixed that way. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't want that kind of fix. Uh, just a, a little bit of background. Uh, the three of us back in the late, uh, mid to late 2000s did Sound Investing, the radio show and podcast together. Late and 90s. Then, late uh, 90s. Late 90s. I thought it was the yeah. 2000s. Oh, no, 90s. We started, You're right. We it was started late Sound 90s. Investing in about 99. 97, 99. You came on well, but a couple we did years together. after that. I came in later. I came in yeah, a couple, a couple years, years after, after that. that. Yeah, early 2000s. Yeah. And we uh, we had such a great time doing it, but then Tom and I left Merriman Capital, oh, or man. whatever it was called. You have then. to bring that up. Come and on. then we're going all the way today, my friend. This I didn't is... know you wanted to make money in for a living. I didn't understand. <laughs> I had just understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we went out and did talking real money, and how we decided to drift back together because, golly gee, Willikers, we have such a good time together. And or I think this is part of world, aging, yeah. by the way. You know, relationships mean a lot more when you get to be my age. And so this is really feeling good. I am, of course, not forgetting that it was my relationship that Tom, I'm sure, led to a divorce. I don't know, but uh, there's... Which one of your divorces? Oh, come oh on, you mean come Tom's on. divorce? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my divorce. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, good news is mine was way before you guys. So, you know, and by I the way, you I we know this was going to have to go bear compliance, but yeah, barely. Okay. Bear no, Marcus. We're no. going to today, today's talk. And, and here, let me just set this up for all of you. Um, we want you to tell us what kind of topics you'd like discussed on these every other week get togethers. So what you can do is you can send Paul a note, just go to paulmerriman.com or you can drop us a line at talkingrealmoney.com. This podcast will appear on both sites, on both services. And uh, according to Paul, we're going to put this video up if it all works. So we'll see how that goes. So yeah, let us know. Way, so, my, my email address is paul at paulmerriman.com. He's just already really promoting easy, himself. We haven't even started the show yet. I, I know. On. Well, just I'll put another nickel in the in the uh, shameless in the can. plug. <laughs> now today's topic is one we all thought might might be a good one right now, given the fact that almost exactly ten years ago there was a thing that nobody was dealing with that was trading for four or five, maybe six dollars a thing. It was called Bitcoin ten years ago. Today, Bitcoin, as we record this, is sitting right around $54,000 a Bitcoin. There are also all kinds of variations on the theme from Ripple to the joke Dogecoin. And um, a lot of you ask us about investing in cryptocurrencies. What do you think of crypto as an investment, Paul? Well, I don't think it is an investment. I'm mean, going to start there. It does not 
does not pass any of the, the, the rules of what would make a good investment. So I don't, I don't see it as an investment. I don't see any reason to have it in my portfolio with the exception of one. It went up. That and was all, I was going to say, but it made people a lot of money. That's exactly right. So did Beanie Babies. So, you know, the, the, <laughs> the bottom line is it does not pass the test that I have as to uh, what a good investment is in terms of of risk and risk management. What is that test? Well, first of all, uh, I think it's got to be simple, easy to understand. And almost every expert I know, Peter Lynch, Warren Buffett, basically they say, don't invest in something that you don't understand. And honestly, guys, I've heard people on the internet Smart people talk about Bitcoin and admit they do not understand it. And yet those are people who are in a position to encourage people to do it. And, and so just because something is hot makes a lot of money. Uh, I do own Tesla, by the way. I, I have a lot of Tesla. But that's because oh. it was in an index fund. So, And because it's a real company. Well, now you own Bitcoin. Tom, what do you think of Bitcoin and Ripple and Ethereum and all of their ilk? You know, I guess a man lives long enough, he pretty much sees everything. The idea that Paul Merriman would say no to a 75% return in one quarter, the best performing, if I'm using air quotes here, asset class is a shock. And since you raised Tesla, I think I have this so right. I don't, Paul, no. Paul, Paul, he's doing the devil's advocate. Don stupidity. believes the guy who runs Tesla is one of the smartest people probably since Tesla. His Saturday no. Night Live performance aside. But I think in the first quarter, if you check the numbers, Tesla made more money with its Bitcoin investment than it did the other part of the thing, which is, I, yeah. oh, that's right, selling cars. So what do I think? Uh, and by the way, yeah. just to go on with this, I mean, what do you really think? I mean, not, you know, this not, idea yeah, that okay. experts have said no is a fallacy. J.P. Morgan, pretty big money manager, starting their own fund soon. A guy named Rick Edelman, who has been on the yeah. radio for many, many years, is is you know a founder of one of the largest registered investment advisories in the country. He's mm, running around telling people there. to use Bitcoin. So I think. I think when we sit here and say Bitcoin is a bad idea, we sound very old. We sound very antiquated. We sound like old men that like the world we has are. passed us by. Can Can I ask we, a question? That's true. I'd like to ask yeah, a ask question. Yeah, ask him a question. Please, take him because, down a peg. <laughs> no, I want the three of us to remember back to 1999 and how we felt when people were emailing us and just ripping us apart for not understanding the technology, the future of technology, and and uh, how we could say that you shouldn't be investing in those very high risk funds. Uh, they just we were out of step with reality, and then in the end, we were right. And and well, and, I, and Paul, all you have to do is think back. Just uh, can you remember back to sixteen thirty seven? Yes, was trading, I, was, uh, I was doing some gardening. <laughs> yes, and yeah. you found out about tulip bulbs, right? Uh, yes, uh, yes, that was a different situation. They're beautiful. I mean, yeah, I exactly. can't. <laughs> and they go up. I mean, that's the combination. But tulip bulbs, this is true, folks. If you don't, you don't study your history, tulip bulbs went up from less than the equivalent of a dollar today to more than the equivalent of $750,000 per tulip bulb between 1636 and 1637. Now, but all and joking it, aside, all joking aside, oh, blockchain, we were joking. blockchain as a technology is, there are uses to blockchain, correct? Yes, everybody yeah. agrees to that. Okay, so this Bitcoin or... Urethium or Dogecoin. I mean, and I, Don's going to get into all the whatever it is. Did you say Urethium? <laughs> whatever it is. 
I, I said serious. I sounded old. I, you've been to the doctor yeah. again. Yeah. Huh? There I, you I'm go. going, wow, it's old man urological humor. Those are. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to the doctor to have my urethium checked. <laughs> well, not during the show. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but, I mean, so these are speculations on what blockchain could become, right? Whether it became some sort of international currency, I mean, or some way that people legitimately would be using it. The reason that I don't believe in it, and I know I was being a little facetious earlier, is that the government doesn't accept it. I don't think you can really be a currency until a government says, we will take this as payment for taxes. And for here's example. the other point about this. Let's. Would you trust a currency that fluctuates as wildly as do the various cryptos. You don't know what their purchasing power is from one second to another, at least with a dollar or a euro or a pound or a one. You have some clue from one day to the next what they will buy. It's re The one quality of a currency that makes it good is its relative stability. That, by definition, makes cryptos bad currencies. But you, but you know, the thing is, is that I hate being able to guarantee that millions of people are going to lose billions of dollars in these cryptocurrencies. And it isn't even whether or not they are a legitimate store of value. I mean, my artwork could be considered a legitimate store of value by my kids, but that's about it. But here's the problem. Just in the last week, the 27-year-old uh, fellow who started, I think it's uh, Todex or Thodex uh, in, in Turkey, uh, he took uh, out of the country uh, and claimed as his own, I understand, uh, some $2 billion in cryptocurrency. Uh, just walked away, stole it. Uh, now, you know, that's the kind of thing I worry about for people. It isn't even whether it'll end up making money. It's just that the downside is so unbelievably high and I don't know that people really understand that. And, and I also know uh, a widow whose husband had, in fact, some Bitcoins, and she cannot find them. She cannot find the key, the password. She cannot oh, get the money. I was going to say, they don't really exist. It's not like you're going to find a bag of coins in the drawer. I well, think I, that, I, I like that. I may do that. that to. I'm, yeah, I may do that to my widow too. I kind of like that that she's searching around trying to figure out how to pay the light bill. <laughs> oh, but okay, but that's all fine. No argument there. But then, why are legitimate people, J.P. Morgan and Rick Edelman, for example, to name two, saying, "Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna use this. This is an investment. It's non-correlating. Uh, it's non-correlating to stocks and bonds. It's a hedge against the U.S. dollar. It's better than gold, etc." Sales pitches, Tom. Oh, really, yeah. sales pitches. Let's think back to the very top of the technology uh, boom in uh, oh, late '99 or early 2000. Was it a coincidence that Merrill Lynch came out with two technology funds as as close to the top as they possibly could? And why did they do that? Because there was demand for it. Does that mean it was Susie good? Susie Orman, another expert, was a huge proponent of the Triple Q, the NASDAQ 100, at its absolute peak, a number it did not get back to for more than a decade. And so I think this almost is simply everybody, taking pardon? advantage of people. You're saying this is just taking advantage yes, of people. The yes, market is jumping on the high. bandwagon. All right. And bandwagon by the way, jumping. Think of the pressure on these people in these financial uh, uh, businesses. To They have to make a decision. Do we play or do we stay away? Because if by chance this is real uh, and, and when the curtain is pulled back, there actually is a Wizard of Oz, then, then they are going to be left behind and we'll have to face the music. In fact, 
it's probably better for them to take a small part of their business, let's participate, and not look like a, a fool in case, just in case we can say we were there. The best example, I think, of the foolishness of cryptocurrencies is a cryptocurrency that was created purely as a joke, as a satire, and that was Dogecoin, named for a guy's Shiba Inu named Doge, D-O-G-E. It's not doggy coin, it's Dogecoin. And Doge coins are worth over $30 billion in aggregate, and yet Doge coins are not accepted for anything. You know, and I yeah, want to but, go back, go back yeah. very quickly, Paul, to, to something you mentioned here that I think is important in the big picture. First of all, Bitcoin at all makes up a very, very, very small part of the world's assets. When you look at stocks, bonds, cash, all that, it's a very small number. Number two, really, at the end of the day, what you're saying is this is FOMO. People are worried they're going to miss out on something, which is not unlike what happened in the late 90s and early 2000s. And I guess that brings to mind number three, because somebody just raised this with us. My client raised this recently and said, wow, I, I made you know, they made like 48% in the last year, but I could have made more. They wanted to take some of their money out and put it in something else that, that had performed better for a recent period of time. And I said, that's just pure greed. I think that's where we're at with the markets because you've had trillions of dollars that have flooded all these things. People are looking for ideas, whether it's nifty, Bitcoin, something that's going to make more than stocks and bonds. And so that's where, and again, to me, this is this is FOMO all over it that people say, I don't want to miss out on something that's going to be huge. Dogecoin FOMOing at the mouth. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me give you an example of why people are going to get hurt because this has happened in the past, even with a legitimate mutual fund. Volatile investments that make a lot of money on the way up and lose a lot of money on the way down have a tendency to cause people to realize, whoa, I didn't know there was that kind of risk in this investment, so they sell. And I think one of the classic stories is CGM Focus for the 10 years ending in uh, 1998, I believe it was. It had about an 18% compound rate of return. Phenomenal. I don't know that it was number one, but it was one of the top performing funds for that decade. Morningstar tracked the actual cash in and cash out because at the end of the day, if people don't own it from day one and hold it the whole period, you don't get the 18%. What they found was the average return of all of those public investors was a minus 16% compound rate of return. Why should... Bitcoin be any different. It's volatile. Uh, you can make a lot of money. You can lose a lot of money. I, I heard a couple people talking about why Bitcoin. It's fun. It's new. Everybody's doing it. And I'm thinking, where in any textbook does it say that the definition of a good investment is something that is fun and new and, and all those things they're talking about. Oh, and by the way, on Dogecoin, Dogecoin, no, Dogecoin, Dogecoin yes. one of the reasons it became so hot is the very thing we used to talk to our kids about. Now, don't idolize people just because they happen to be a, a good basketball player. There's more to life, and you know, they may talk about things other than basketball, and are they qualified to be experts on things other than basketball? Well, you know, that's a decision we make, and a lot of us run around with some name on a shirt to celebrate somebody we idolize. Well, people who are in this process, like Dogecoin, They've been putting their name into the, into the discussion about what a wonderful thing Dogecoin is. And isn't that the way a, uh, what do they call it when your chain letter works? You know, you, oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get yeah, other pyramid. people to come in later. It's, it's a classic mm -hmm. pump and dump. That's what it yep. actually is. Now, I have to give Motley Fool credit 
uh, for great headlines. I want to read you the, a, a Motley Fool headline, and I want to modify it a little bit. Their headline, they're so great at headlines to get people's attention. Three ETFs that are better than Dogecoin. Oh. <laughs> Shouldn't that headline be tens of thousands of things that are better than Dogecoin? But let's Almost go back. Let's everything. go. Let's go back to where Paul started because I think that's at the end of the. For me, as I say, I the reason I ask anybody is why do you need this? Why do you need this in your portfolio? Why is this important? And generally, the act, the answer is what you just said, Paul. It's new. It's exciting. But go back to what the reason you invest in stocks. The reason you invest in stocks is these are. You're exposing your money to sometimes great companies, sometimes not as great, but but over time, in a general way, those have grown, companies have become more productive, and people have paid for that. Number two, you invest in bonds because they pay you interest, and hopefully at the end of it all, they pay you your principal back. Those are real investments. With Bitcoin, it's a lot like, and Don's pointed this out many times, is simply a speculation as to the next person's willingness to part with their money to buy it. That is it. It is like gold. It is just, I hope the next guy says it's worth 60000 instead of 55000 That's really not an investment. That truly is a speculation, which is different Pure than investing. Gambling. Yeah. Pure gambling. Greater, the greater the other, fool. The greater fool. Greater theory. fool. We're waiting for the last idiot to jump in the pool. Uh, and if I can all make, the water's gone. make one comment about the business you're in and that I used to be in, and I loved that business. Uh, we're working with people. You're working with people, trying to help them sort out their things so they can plan for the future. So if if I'm talking, if I'm, I don't do this anymore, but if I did... I would be talking about the long-term expected return. For example, if I could use the S&P 500. I know from looking at numbers since 1928 that if you look at the average 40-year period, it's 11%. The best 40-year period was a 12.5% compound rate of return. The worst was 89 so I've got some idea historically about where that's going to end up, which then allows us to, to help people plan. How much money do I need to put away to make this all work out? I don't know how to do that with Bitcoin. I could not start to plan what $1,000 in Bitcoin is likely to be worth in 40 years. Which is I can, though, Paul. I yes. can give you that number because, as Tom mentioned, blockchain makes sense. The concept makes sense because it's a great way to track wealth, to store it, to track it, to make it easily exchangeable and fungible. But Bitcoin is not the answer to the problem because there's no problem it really answers. The answer to the problem of fungibility of ease of access, of easy transactions, of a, a high degree of security is already beginning to happen in China with the digital blockchain yuan. And I am confident will happen within the next few years with a blockchain dollar. If you had to choose between a Bitcoin and a blockchain dollar backed by the U.S. government, which would you pick? Yeah, I mean, you got it. And, and, and that's why... Bitcoin is going to have to be regulated. There is no way the governments are going to allow in the long term uh, that being unregulated. Because if you allow Bitcoin to be unregulated, there will be massive manipulation and fraud. I mean, there are so many bad things that will happen. And how do we know this? Because it was the way the market was for stocks prior to the SEC establishing a, a set of rules to how these things... Did you things do your taxes? Did you do your taxes yet? No. When you do your taxes, you will notice a box on the 1040. Brand new this year. Mm. It says, have you bought or sold or done any transactions in cryptocurrencies? Oh, because if you have and you don't check that box, now you're guilty of possibly tax fraud. They are the government is getting ready to start regulating and taxing cryptocurrencies because they have to. Yeah. Yeah, and I I see how President Biden would like to spend another eighty billion dollars 
that the allow the Internal Revenue Service to be a little more aggressive in in hopes of attaining some seven hundred billion, which I, know, I like the return I, on that. By the way, I, I had no part. idea that politics might have come up. No, here it's today. Not, that's not that's not a, that's not a political <laughs> statement. That's a simply oh. a matter of because we're going to do no, we I, do a class on taxes, and we yeah. do suggest you pay them. Uh, Call we it don't, political. We, we don't we don't have any tricks. <laughs> no, I just said it's a good idea to spend eighty to get seven hundred. Yeah, back. it is. I, that's, that's a, a great return on your investment. I'm, the ROI on that, I'm all about it. Um, so so we are all in agreement now. All kidding aside, as I started the program, um, that that the investing in any cryptocurrency does not make sense. You do not need this in your portfolio, and that uh, the people that are running around telling you that you really got to be in this are hyping things up, getting you excited about something that may end up to be completely bust. And that's going to b- uh, wrap up our time. Oh, oh so, man, I had one more point to make. That's okay, Go ahead. Please. Go ahead. No, make look, your one more point look, because this we can is make this any length we want. Good. This, I think, is really an important point because we're in a business of trying to manage people's expectations to the extent that they'll let us help them. With me, it's just education. With you, it's education in actually managing people's money. But when people used to come to me and say, what's wrong with speculating with 10% of my portfolio? I just think it would be fun to be in there competing against the other experts or or amateurs. The thrill of the chase. Well, my only answer was, if you can convince me that this money that you're thinking about losing, because most people who speculate, unfortunately, do end up losing, that's what we know, what happens to you later in life? If you looked back, if you actually took a moment and looked back and said, boy, I wish I had that money I lost back, not only would I want that money back? But from what I know today, that money would be working. And how many times have you guys heard people say, boy, if I had just known what you're telling me 20, 30, 40 years ago, my life would be different today. Well, my concern is that there are people who are going to put money into these cryptocurrencies that will just simply mean, and they'll never know it, by the way, They retire one or two years later. They give less to their kids. They have less to money to to spend when they do retire. It is a really big decision. You just oftentimes don't know it. Would you have fun throwing it out the window of your car going down the highway? Burn it. That's more fun. Uh, Can I make a suggestion for the next program? I got three options. Uh, AMC stock. AMC stock. (laughs) Uh, Right. Tulip bulbs, or Don, or Paul yeah. mentioned uh, Beanie Babies. You guys can pick from uh, any of those three, and we'll take that one up next time. So. All right, or all right. I'll bring my collection. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna work on a better idea. Okay. Go hey, ahead. everybody. Um, if you like what you hear, please go to your favorite podcast service and leave reviews for either one of our podcasts. And remember, this is going to be at, both at Talking Real Money and at Sound Investing. And if you haven't listened to Sound Investing, Paul's got a great podcast. If you haven't listened to Talking Real Money, Tom and I uh, just crossed a million downloads for Talking Real Money. We're very excited. That's great. And we really appreciate all of you listening, watching us, and telling friends about what we do. Because what we are truly trying to do is make you a better manager of your money because it's your money it's not your broker's money it's not uh, bitcoin's money or dogecoin's money it's your money we want to help you get it right so thanks for listening thanks for watching for paul merriman and tom cock i'm don mcdonald have a great one